Thank you very much. Uh, the book, Native Son by Richard Wright, was challenged as a part of the reading list for the advanced English classes at Northwest High School in High Point, North Carolina in 1996. Because, guess what? It's actually graphic and violent. I'm going to read selections from this book, the book three of Native Son, which is entitled Fate. The protagonist, Bigger Thomas, is a young African-American man who is hired as a chauffeur by a rich white man. He drives his employer's daughter, Mary, to a political lecture. He takes Mary and her friend, Jan, to a restaurant where Mary gets drunk. Bigger takes her home and carries her to her room. When Mary's blind mother enters the room, Bigger accidentally smothers Mary while trying to keep her from revealing his presence. Later, Bigger kills his girlfriend, Bessie, in fact that she will reveal his guilt. He is captured by the police, put to trial, and sentenced to death. The following is part of the conversation with his lawyer, Max, just before his execution. And reading the selection from pages uh, 355 to 358. Now, they say that native son is disturbing, but the complete theme and the point of the book disturbs and teaches us. The novel forces us to look at the crippling, deadly effects of oppression and racism in this country and as they instill fear and lead to desperate acts. So, here goes. Native son, the excerpts. Uh, Mr. Max, I sort of saw myself after that night and I sort of saw other people too. And then Mr. Baker's voice died. He was listening to the echoes of his word in his own mind. He saw amazement and horror on Max's face. Bigger knew that uh, Max would rather not have him talk like this, but he would not help it. He had to die and he had to talk. Well, uh, it, it's sort of funny, Mr. Max. I'm trying to dodge what is coming to me. Bigger was growing hysterical. I know I'm going to get it. I'm going to die. Well, that's all right now, but really, I never wanted to hurt anybody. That's the truth, Mr. Max. I hurt folks because I felt I had to. That's all. They was crowding me too close and they wouldn't give me no room. Lots of times I tried to forget them. They wouldn't let me. Now this time, Bigger's eyes were wide and unseen, his voice rushed on. Mr. Max, I didn't mean to do what I did. I was only trying to do something else. But it seemed like I never could. I was always wanting something and I was always thought, feeling that nobody would let me have it. So I fought them. I thought they was hard and I acted hard. Then after a while he said, but I ain't hard. Mr. Max, I ain't harder even a little bit. He rose to his feet and said, but I, 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 I won't be crying none when, they, when it takes me to that chair. But I'll I, I be, be, be feeling like inside of me like I was crying. I'll be feeling and thinking that they didn't see me and I didn't see them either. Now he ran to the steel door and caught the bars in his hand and shook them and though trying to tear the steel from its concrete moorings, Max, the lawyer, went to him and grabbed his shoulder. Uh, bigger. Bigger grew still and leaned weakly against the door. Uh, Mr. Max, I know the folks who sent me here to die hated me. I know that. But, 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 but you reckon that, that there was like me trying to g g get something like, like I was. And I, I'm dead and gone to be saying, uh, like I'm saying now, they didn't mean to hurt nobody. That, 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 that they was trying to get somebody, uh, somebody too. Max, the lawyer, did not answer. Bigger took a look of indecision and wonder came into his old man's eyes. Tell me, Mr. M Mr. Max, do you think there was? Bigger, Max pleaded. Tell me, Mr. Max. Max shook his head and mumbled. 
you're asking me to say things I don't want to say. Yeah, but, 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 but I want to know. You're going to die, Bigger. Max four voices have faded. Bigger knew that the old man had wanted to say that. He said it because it had pushed him. He had made him say it. They were silent for a moment longer. Then Bigger whispered. That's why I want to know. I reckon it's because I know I'm going to die. That makes me want to know. Max's face was a shade. Uh, Bigger stared that he was going to leave. Across the gulf came silence, and they looked at each other. Uh, c -c Come here, Bigger. He followed Max to the window and saw in a distance the tips of the sun-drenched buildings of the loop. See all those buildings over there? Now, placing his hand on his shoulder, he said, Now, yeah, you lived in one of them, Bigger. They are made out of steel and stone, but the steel and stone don't hold them together. You know what holds those buildings together, Bigger? You know what keeps them in a place? Keeps them from tumbling down? Bigger looked at him bewildered. It's the belief in man. If men stopped believing, stopped having faith, they'll come tumbling down. Those buildings sprang up out of the hearts of men. Bigger, men like you. Men kept hungry, kept needing, and those buildings kept growing and unfolding. You once told me you wanted to do lots of things. Well, that's the feeling that keeps those, those buildings in their place. You mean, you talking about what I said last night? When I said I wanted to do lots of things? Bigger's voice came quiet, chat-like, like in a tone of hunger. Yes, what you felt, what you wanted is what keeps those buildings standing there. When millions of men are desiring and longing, those buildings grow and unfold. But bigger, those buildings are growing and not growing anymore. A few men are squeezing those buildings tightly in their hands. The buildings can't unfold, can't feed the dreams. The men inside of those buildings have been begun to doubt, just as you did. They don't believe anymore. They don't feel it's their world. They're restless like you. Grow and unfold. They grow in the streets and they stand outside those buildings and look. You will leave again, but it's not too late to believe what you felt, to understand what you felt. At this point in time, Bigger was gazing in the direction of the buildings, but he did not see them. He was trying to react to the picture. Max was drawing, trying to compare that picture with what he had felt in his inside all his life. See, I wanted to do something for myself, he mumbled to himself. And then there was silence. And Max did not speak again until Bigger looked at him. Max closed his eyes. See, Bigger, you're going to die. And if you die, you die free. You're trying to believe in yourself. And every time you find a way to live, you, your, your mind stands in the way. You know why it is? It's because others have said you were bad and you made your life in bad conditions. When a man hears that over and over and looks about him and sees that his life is bad, he begins to doubt his own mind. His feelings drag them forward and his mind, full of what others have to say about him, tells him to go back. The job in getting people to fight and have faith is in making them believe in what, they, what life has, has for them and make them feel, making them feel that their feelings are as good as others. They say bigger, the people who hate you feel just as you feel, only they are on the other side of the fence. You are black, and that's the only part of it. You're being black as I told you before, makes it easy for them to single you out. Why did they do that? They want the things of life, just as you did, and you're not particular about how they get them. They hire people, and they're not particular about how they get them. They hire people, and they rule and regulate their lives. They have things arranged so that they can do things and the people can fight back, so that they, black folks, uh, modern, Others, because they're black, they think that they're inferior. But 
bigger. They, uh, they say that all people who work are inferior. And the rich people don't want to change. They lose too much. But deep down in them, bigger, in order to keep what they've got, they got to make themselves believe that men who work are not quite human. They do like you did. Bigger, you refused to feel sorry for Mary. But on the other side, both men want to leave. Oh, I reckon I believe in myself then. I ain't got nothing else to lose. I got to die, though. He stepped over to Max, and Max was leaning against the window. Mr. Max, you go home. I'm all right. Sounds funny, Mr. Max, but when I think about what you say, I feel what I wanted. It makes me feel I was kind of right. I ain't trying to forgive nobody, and I ain't asking for nobody to forgive me. I ain't going to cry. They wouldn't let me, and I killed. Maybe it ain't fair to kill, and I reckon I don't, I didn't, no, I didn't want to kill. But when I think of why all the killing was, I begin to feel what I wanted. That is what I am. Thank you.